Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today I have another pedal power supply from K-Line Technologies. Full disclosure, they did send this to, to me free of charge, but they did not ask me to review this, but I am going to be doing it on my own accord because I think this is actually probably one of the most feature-laden ones, but also has some of the biggest flaws, and I'll go into that here in the next part of the video. But let's get into it. This is the model CP201 from K-Line Technologies, and it's the most feature-laden that I can see. Uh, it does not have a USB port, but what it does have is more interesting than I would expect to find in a pedal power supply, as this power supply has a direct out box or a DI box built into it. And they also give you the ability to pipe in external music in when you have it hooked up to either the PA system or your amplifier. I thought that was pretty interesting to find on a pedal power supply, and it would come in handy if you don't want to have an external DI box connected to your pedal board. Some players will actually have that, but this particular one has it built into the power supply, which I think is pretty cool. A quick unboxing, you get the instructions, you get the wall adapter, which is 18 volts and one amp, you get the power brick itself, and then you get all your wires for going to all of your pedals. They give you this three and a half millimeter mail to mail, which is for that aux in to connect to your phone, to your iPod, to an MP3 player, some audio source, for example, and a few other pedal adapters for the oddball ones that don't have your standard 2.1 millimeter barrel adapter. Now, in terms of the features, this is where I'm actually quite impressed. So they have no output USB, meaning a USB type A to say charge your tablet or your phone or anything like that. They have that feature on some of their other power supplies. This one doesn't have it, but they make up for it. They have this micro USB input where you can actually uh, run your first two outputs here at nine volts. It's got a step up converter to go from five volts to nine volts at 100 milliamps. Interesting that they would do a feature like that. I don't see when you would really need it, but it's there just the same. I thought that might be interesting. You power the input here with 18 volts, and then you have access to all of these outputs here. You have a lot of low current ones, 100 milliamps, then you have 300s here, and then you have your 12 and 18 volts output here, which are denoted by the yellow color output color here. Now the switch over here will turn on these blue indicator lights. They're really, really bright, but it does not have an effect on the outputs as far as turning them on and off. It only operates these indicator lights. These blue lights are on normally if this switch is on, and if you short out the output, the blue light will go out indicating that there's a short and you should address it. And you can usually leave it off so you don't have those lights blaring you in the face. That's a nice little feature as well. Here on the back, we have the di box set up here we have your typical in and out quarter inches for your unbalanced high impedance signal and then it will convert it over to a balanced low impedance signal via an xlr connector it also gives you a 0 and 18 db pad here now i want to check to see if the, if 0 db is mic what is that mic level is that line level i'd be very curious because typically di boxes will convert instrument level to mic level via an XLR, and that will go directly to a mixing desk, but I'm wondering, does zero dB mean line level? Can you actually use this to send to uh, your power amp directly and have your pedal board signal go directly to a power amp? I'm gonna find that out. I do know for looking at this, uh, taking this apart inside, this is an electronically balanced XLR, and it is not galvanically isolated with a transformer, so keep that in mind. And that kind of brings me to the point about this particular power supply that I'm a little disappointed in. There is no isolation transformers inside this at all. The incoming wall power is not isolated from the outputs. Yes, there are individual linear voltage regulators for each output, so if you short one, it's not gonna affect the others but you do have a common ground plane for all of these outputs here. That is potential for noise. It is not employing any type of isolation technique. And unlike their newer models, which are actually doing that and doing it in a very good fashion, uh, I cannot really say this is the best circuit design, but then again, this is one of their older pedal power supplies. Most 
feature laden, in my opinion. And I thought it was actually the most unique in terms of having a DI box on the back. So, a little disappointed that it doesn't have isolation. But let's check on that XLR and see how much signal it's actually outputting. All right, a quick test here. I have my Jazz Bass Copy passive electronics plugged in and going up to my little sub mixer here that I usually use for when I'm podcasting and I can tell you that the output here is anywhere from 0.1 volts to 0.2 volts with peaks so that is definitely instrument level it is not line level so this will need a mixing console in order to drive a power amp you cannot drive a power amp directly with this so it is a direct box the other issue that I have found is that the switch when it's in negative 18 dB it should actually be swapped that graphic should be swapped so when in the switch is in the down position that's 0 dB and then when it's in the up position that is the negative 18 dB pad also the circuit design is not as I mentioned there's not really good there's no isolation in here but when these lights are on, you're actually getting some background noise in the XLR when these lights are on. So there's further flaws in the circuit design on this particular pedal power supply that would not make this very good. You know, they just unfortunately poorly implemented the DI feature on this power supply. So thumbs down for that. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I think that this was a little bit ambitious for K-Line to make a power supply and then also a DI box on the back. While it looks cool and the features are really nice, it's just poorly implemented inside. If they were to add the ice, if I was to make any suggestions, I would say get rid of this 5 volt USB in. There's really no need for that. I doubt that anyone's going to really use that. Uh, add transformer isolation and isolation to each one of these outputs to start to get the power supply to work correctly. Also, if you're going to continue, if they're going to have the uh, DI box feature on the back here, you'll have to add more noise suppression so that none of the components here on the power supply section, namely the LED array, will interfere and cause a higher noise floor on the XLR out. If they can figure out a way to fix that, then this will be a decent pedals power supply. But for right now, the way that it's in the way it's designed now, definitely a thumbs down. But till the next video guys, thanks so much for watching. Any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Cheers.